wish everyone a happy Father's Day, but also thank everyone that came out from the church yesterday on our cleanup day and, and put in all your efforts to uh, uh, clean the church up and that yearly uh, good cleansing. I want to just thank you for that. Uh, this morning is Father's Day. And I'd like you to turn God's Word open to Psalm 127. <laughs> turn God's Word open to Psalm 127. Today's message title is called Being a Robin Hood in Fatherhood. And our scripture is going to come from this psalm of 127 and 128. I'm going to begin reading in verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so He gives His beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine. In the very heart of your house, your children, like olive plants, all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion, and may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Would you bow your heads in prayer with me? And dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this day to celebrate the day that, that the fathers here on this earth uh, raise children in a godly manner. But Lord, also this day, let us reflect upon how our Heavenly Father loves us even more than we can comprehend. And let us, through Your Word, understand in a deeper meaning how we can reflect that relationship of our Heavenly Father to our children here on earth. If there's any here, Lord, that doesn't know You as, as their God and their Lord and their Savior, that they might come to that knowledge here today. Lord, be with us during the service. Pour Your grace, mercy, and Spirit down upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right. You know, you don't have to really be special to father a child. But to be a daddy, a, a good dad, you have to have something better altogether. Look at what the wise Solomon wrote when he said in verses 3 and 4 of the 127th song, he said, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward like arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are children of one's youth. Kids are like arrows. The dad is a mighty warrior. We're going to see how he is He is like God's archer. When the dad aims straight, you will see that the kids then hit the mark. Now the arrow though, we're going to look at in these Scriptures in just a moment, we're going to see how the arrow though is no more effective than the archer. And the bow is no better than the warrior who holds it. So what we're going to understand this morning is what God's Word says about how to be a mighty, mighty father who shoots straight to his kids and raises godly children. Now, I know a little bit about archery. I started shooting bows at a very young age. I think my first bow was one of the ones that had the little plunger tips on the front. You may have seen them in the dollar store. But as I got older, my bow grew also. Now, my brother also shot archery. And he's a rather large fellow. You wouldn't know it by looking at me, but he competes at the in the strongman competition, actually. He's a big, burly, strong fellow. And we shot bows frequently together, and, and sometimes every now and then I would try to pick his up, and, and I think his was the one that Samson used to own. <laughs> I think it had a 100-pound draw. I tried to shoot it one day, and, and I couldn't get it pulled back, and my arrow just sputtered a few feet and fell. I reflected upon that and I realized that to be an archer, you have to possess strength. You have to have the strength to pull the bow back. 
It takes skill. It, it takes practice. It's not something that you can just go purchase one that morning and be shooting in the bullseye that evening. And an archer in, in the biblical times, he could pull back a, a hundred pound bow and shoot it three or four hundred yards. It took a great mighty man to be able to do that. It took a great person. Today, dads are as arrows in the hands of a warrior as our children. If we would shoot straight to them and raise godly children, I want us this morning to look at five things that we can look at from this Psalm 127 and 128. And the first thing I'd like for us to look at is that a warrior must be skilled and strong. You cannot be a good dad without developing spiritual, emotional, and mental strength yourself. You know, I found it very unique. I was looking at some illustrations the other day, and, and I come across a, a thing on an airplane. And you know, I, I, I've been a while since I flew. It's probably been uh, less than a year. But I remember on the plane that it had the little mast, and it said that they would, and, and the stewardess, they showed them to you, and, and it said that they would fall out if the cabin pressure dropped below such and such, and, and you would put it on. And you know, one thing they told you was very striking. They said, if there's someone next to you, and they can't get theirs on, then you need to put yours on first before you can help them. The reason being is because if you didn't put yours on first, then you wouldn't have the strength because you wouldn't have the oxygen to be able to help them. And a lot of times because dads aren't able to raise their children the way they should, they don't have the strength to do it because they're not seeking the strength first from God. We first, as fathers, must have a hierarchy of values that puts being a good Christian and a good husband and a good dad at the top. How is it that we conduct our personal lives and business? How is it that we act when we're out in public? How is it that we act in home? Do we live by the Christian principles that we claim to represent? Do we do that? And the second thing we want to notice this morning is that a twig must be shapen and sharpened. Folks, children are not born arrows. <laughs> they're not born arrows as you see here in the Psalm 127. Matter of fact, they're exact opposite. They're born crooked little sticks. They're born crooked little sticks and, and they have to be made and sharpened into arrows. It takes time. I remember the story of, of the farmer that was he always had his children out there working. He always, when the other boys was off and you know going to the movies or they was going down to a day, they was going out to have some fun, fishing, hunting, riding four wheelers or horses or something, his boys were continuously having to work in the cornfields. And finally somebody asked him one day, they said, Why do you keep those boys out there working all the time? You don't even need all this corn you're growing. He looked at him and said, Sir, I'm not raising corn. I'm raising boys. You see, because the values that we instill up in our children and the ethics that we teach them while they're young are the ones that they will carry over and be the building blocks of their faith in the future. It's a father's responsibility to make those arrows out of the twigs and sticks. Paul said it like this in Ephesians chapter 6. Paul is addressing the issue of, of the relationship of children to parents and parents to children. And he said this in, in chapter 6 of Ephesians. He said, Children, obey your parents and the Lord because that is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may have a, a long life in the land. But then he gives a word to fathers too. And he said, Fathers, don't stir up anger in your children, but bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Bringing them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. And folks, let me tell you this morning that we cannot do that by handing our kids off to others. We think that we can stick them in the daycare where we don't have to tend with them and the teacher will do something there at the daycare. Or we send them off to school and expect teachers to instill in them the values and morals that we should be doing ourselves at home. Amen. And then we make it more complicated by legislating it where they can't even teach them morality and ethics. Yes. And then when we do have them in our home, what do we do? We set them either in front of the television, in front of the gaming system, the computer, or the iPod. Look who is training our children. 
Look who is raising our children. Folks, it is our job, not anyone else's, to raise our children up in the Lord and give them the instructions from God. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, He gave instructions on the children and said, Teach your children in everything you do, when you're lying, when you're sleeping, when you're walking, when you're standing somewhere, everywhere you are, you should be teaching your children. I know sometimes it's, it's difficult because you, you've got things to do. You've got a busy schedule. But folks, you have to make time. It is an investment. What's the psalm say? It says that youth, children in your youth are like arrows in your quiver. It is an investment toward the future. If we want not only our families to continue to succeed after us, but if we want our communities, our country, then we must begin instilling the morals and values in our children, ourselves, and not expecting others to do it. We must be shaping these children into arrows. We have to start early. You know, it's very hard to make an arrow out of a giant oak tree. It's very hard. Arrows are, are usually made from very young trees. And there's a reason. It's because when an arrow is shot, it has to be able to bend. If an arrow did not bend, it would not be able to hit its target. And that reason it bends is because it's, it's able to be able to be instructed. When a child is young, he can be instructed. You can teach him things. You can show him. But as the old saying goes, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. When somebody gets old and, and our children, we wake up one day and they're 23, 25, 21, they're leaving the house, we can't start then expecting to raise them. The time has passed. You have to start early. Early. And then we have to build the character in them before they success. We, we have to show them that some things are more important than what the world judges as success. That true success in this life is not measured in wealth. It's not measured in material gain. True success is measured by our relationship with God and how we conduct ourselves with others. That is true success. We also need to remember we were young once. We were young once. Know how to reach your children. Set goals and set limits. Too many times today that we, we want our children to succeed in something so badly that we set no limits. We only set the goal. Wait, if you're going to be on that basketball team, you're going to be the best. But we don't set the limitation that if it interferes with church, that's why we cut it off. Because I promise you, God will be there when the basketball quits bouncing. Right. Folks, we have to show them what is important in life. What is the priority that we should be going by, they should be going by, we should be hearing by also. Assign the responsibilities. Children need responsibilities. They need to be shown how to work. But we also need to let them see God at work in us. See what we put first. See our morals. See our ethics. See how we conduct ourselves in a godly manner because I promise you, when you do not think children are watching, that is when they're watching. I heard a very interesting story one time. There was some children in church and one of the members was there. His, he, was, he had recently been single. His wife had passed away a few years earlier. And he had been seeing a new woman. And they had been trying to keep it under wraps. And the little girl was trying to make friends with another little girl at church, and she was like, well, why don't you come and stay all night with me for the week? She said, well, hey, you, and her dad was trying to explain to her, well, you can't stay the entire week. And she looked at dad and said, well, your friends stay the week. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you they're watching. They're watching when you do not think they are. And they are listening. Even when they are very young, what you watch on TV, what you listen to on the radio, they are absorbing. So be careful what you put into their minds because everything you put there is a seed that is being instilled upon their minds that is growing and growing. So what are you putting in them? Oftentimes today in society, all we care about is what we're feeding them. 
We've got to get healthier lunches. More nutrition. Folks, what we really need to be considering is the nutrition of the mind that we're putting in them. Their values that we instill up in them, the ethics that we put in them, will be far more important in the long run than the vitamin A, B, and C that we're putting in them. But also, the third point is that the bow must be strung and bent. Neither the arrow nor the warrior is any good without a bow. I can have all kinds of arrows. I can be the world's greatest archer, but if I don't have a bow, what good are they? It's the bow that sends the arrow forward with power. So what is the symbolism of the bow in Psalm 127? It is prayer. Make it a habit to pray for your children, your grandchildren, neighbors' children, children at school, children at church. Pray earnestly with them. Being a dad without prayer is being like a warrior with an unstrung bow. We never waver. We continue to pray without ceasing. And don't just start praying once they're here. Start praying for kids as soon as you know they're in the womb. Start praying for that child that they will be godly. That they will seek the Lord above and all. And that brings us to our next thing. Your aim must be true and clear. Now I know that there's probably a lot of you in here that, that's, that's used archery and hunting or sportsmen. And you know, one of the things when you're, when you're hunting with a bow is you must make sure before you go to shoot at your target that your aim is true and your aim is clear. Even the tiniest little limb coming off a tree can deflect an arrow and it won't hit its target. You can be premature in your shot. You cannot release it correctly and the arrow will not hit its target. We must learn the importance of firing the arrow true and clear. And the Apostle John said this. John said this in, in the third epistle of John in the fourth verse. He said, I have no greater joy than this to hear that my children are walking in truth. To hear my children are walking in truth. You see, the true and clear that you shoot your arrow into is the truth. By definition, sin is missing the mark. It is not hitting the target that God has set out for us and the goals for us to set out to achieve. And that brings us to this. What are the goals that you have established for your children? Think about it. What is it that you really want from your children? Do you want them to succeed in life? Do you want them to be wealthy? Do you want them to get into the best prestigious prep college? What do you want them to do? Do you want them to play sports? Do you want them to grow up and have material wealth? Do you want them to grow up and have a big home? What is it you want from them? That's something you probably need to think and reflect on. And I'll tell you, I don't really care if my children get any of those. It, I, I, it would be good with me if they had wealth and if they had health and, and they had a nice place to live, but that's not my main concern. That's not my main concern. My main concern for my own children is that they would be smack dab center in the will of God. That when that arrow flies, it does not miss the mark. It does not get distracted by wealth. It does not get extracted, extracted by, by how much it can know and gain and knowledge. It does not get distracted by anything else of the world, but it keeps focused on the will of God and goes right into the center because I know when they're in the will of God, God will take care of them above all. Our Heavenly Father will meet all their needs. The world meeting their needs might not be their true need. Some people don't need $10 million. How many people won the lottery and you hear a year or two later, they're dead. God knows your true needs and what truly in your life that you need to cause you to succeed and grow in Him. What good are arrows if they're not aimed? Point your children to the will of God and fire them there. And that brings us to this next thing, that the arrow must be released and sent. It must be released and sent. Our goal as parents is to produce children that are emotionally and spiritually
spiritually ready to leave home. Kids who are ready to go off from home and love someone else in a different way than they love their parents. In a different way. Let me provide you with some statistics of the importance of raising that child to where they'll be released and sent. You know, if you yourself aren't coming to church, let me give you a few things. A father who doesn't come to church at all and a mother who comes regularly, only 2% of the children will become to church regularly when they get older. 37% will come every now and then on Easter and Christmas is usually what it is. And 60% of those kids will be completely lost. They will not even know Christ. If a father attends just sometimes and the mother regularly, the percentage goes up to 3% of them will, will come to church regularly. But folks, if you're a father and you come to church regularly, then only a quarter of those parents that come to church regularly as children won't come.